Nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm Isaac Tzachy Shaked. Yes. Father um, Theodorus. Yeah. Well, English. Well, he's still in charge of the movie. Ah, um, thank you. And I, he is the brightest one in the museum, we can say. Thank you, because that museum is so important for me. I, I used to come to here when, like, many years ago. You remember the old museum? Yes. With an open roof, not maintained well. And one day, and someone said, one day we will have a new museum. And I was waiting for that day, and it came, and it came here. And then, thank you for doing it, because I think it's important to people, yeah, to people to know about what's happened to the Armenians, uh, to know about Armenia in, uh, in, 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 in the Holy Land. Uh, I mean, and for me, I told him that I'm in every tour, I'm talking about, I'm at least saying two things about the Armenians. First one is about the genocide. I want everyone to read about it, because not everyone knows about it. And the second thing, the first Christians who actually, uh, the first nationality, the first Christians were the Armenians. Then uh, for me, it's important to, uh, to tell you that. And I'm so happy that I'm meeting you now. And he is actually helping me to spread the love all over the world. <laughs> then, then we are, can I talk, can I say everything about you? Yeah. yeah. Between us, we're speaking Hebrew, but uh, Eric, you say? Yes, Eric. Yeah, uh, Eric, yeah. Eric. Uh, Eric is a tour guide, an Armenian Israeli tour guide, and um, we are at an amazing museum of the Armenians uh, at the Armenian Quarter. This is an, another possibility to visit part of the Armenian uh, Quarter, and um, he's going to be our tour guide because I know nothing. <laughs> so, hello everybody. My name is Arek Kahkejian. I live in the old city. And today we are at the Museum of Mardigian. Helen and Edward Mardigian are the biggest donations that gave money to the museum you see today. They gave about two and a half million dollars. Uh, the museum is very style of European. Uh, it's very. Very, very yeah. European and it's very self-used. But some things are not really ready. ready so that it's it's the beginning. They, uh, you opened yeah. the museum like a week ago, two, two weeks, weeks ago. ago. Yeah. yeah, all right. I know that, you know, every, <laughs> in every place... Um, you, have to, you know what? Visit the museum in about two weeks from now. Yes. <laughs> All right, then everything will be better. Okay. So we are in front of the main star of the museum. This is the mosaic they found in Musrara, uh, in front of Damas Damascus Gate yeah. on the Rehov Nevi'im. Prophet yeah. Nevi'im, yes. yes. Um, now, uh, it was found in 1894. And when it was found, they thought it was Byzantine at first. What's the reason? All the narratives you see in front of you are Christian. Yes. It's, it's very Byzantine. You can see it all over Israel. Well, how did we know it's Armenian? We got the two sentences you see above are in Armenian. All right. This is the oldest, one of the oldest Armenian um, mosaics in Israel. Sixth century. Sixth century. Can you believe it? It's sixth century. And, and let, can I ask you some questions in between? Um, when I'm reading Hebrew from the 6th century, I know a little bit of it, it's not so easy to read it, but can you read the Armenian from 6th century or it's totally different than the Armenian of today? So the priests can. The priests that we saw? Yeah, because the Armenian is very, very based on the 6th okay. century Armenian. They still read it. It's like a biblical Armenian. Exactly. Okay, exactly. okay. So this is how we know it was Armenian. And when it was found, uh, it was Armenian. The Armenian burger came and brought, uh, bought the Bought it, lot. yes. <laughs> Thanks God for that. Yes. To Thanks God for that, yes. And what happened is um, they preserved it until 2019. 2019, the decision of the museum came up. So they said they're going to take out the museum from that street and bring it back here. It took them two years to dismantle and bring it back. And one of the interesting stories, they found bodies underneath the mosaic. All right, and that actually maybe explained the, the, the inscription. Exactly. Yes. So, in the 3rd century, we know there were the 10th legion of the Roman Empire, were of, uh, they had Armenian soldiers in them. So, one of the stories is um, when uh, Julius the Caesar, Caesar was, yes. yes, he was against Christianity, he brought back the pagan. True. Name. True. So when he came to the Armenians, he, he told them you have two choices. Either you go back as pagans, either you, you get executed. They all prefer to get executed. So the sentences in Armenian says that only God knows the name of the yeah, soldiers true. that gave their life for their beliefs. Wow. Okay? Wow. And 
Here we have a lot of Christian narratives that we see in front of us. We have the basket of bread, we have the pelican, we have the pearl and the clam, we have the, e the eagle, we have the cage inside the bird, and when the, above it we have a basket full of grapes. Yes. So one of the narratives is the blood of Jesus, the meat of Jesus. The pelican has a Christian narrative that when he cannot feed his young or his adults. Where, 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 where is the pelican? Uh, above the basket? Exactly. All right. Okay, that's a pelican. Uh, so the pelican, the story is one of the beliefs when he can't feed his young, he makes a wound in himself and he gives it life yeah. for his young. Fit in the, I eat that bread, this exactly. is my body. This I love it, exactly. I love it, yeah. So you have the clam, it's another resemblance of the soul. The pearl, you have to keep it, you have to take care of it. The eagle shows you the power and the supremacy of the air. The cage and the bird inside, it shows you the soul, the Armenian. Okay, I didn't understand if that the soul or if everything are free, he is not free, I mean that bird. Exactly. All right, then now I know that it's the soul. Exactly. And above it, you have the sentence in Armenia. And from above it, you have another big basket with bread in it. And even birds eating from it, which yeah. is the giving. So this mosaic is based on the soldiers in the 3rd century, but the mosaic is 6th century. Okay. Okay, so one of the stories is when the families came back to Israel with the bodies of the Armenians that got executed, they built a small monastery slash a church at Musrara. Okay? Okay, and Musrara, it's, it's the, next to the Damascus Gate. In front yeah. of Damascus Yeah, because gate. they don't know what <laughs> Musrara is. We know, but they exactly. don't. Yeah. So it's in front of Damascus Gate. Yes. So when they excavated the, the entire mosaic, they found the bodies of the soldiers that are buried underneath. So the belief is when the families came in the 6th century, they brought with them the bodies. Amazing. Um, Amazing. We're going to see the entire process right here. All right. Let, let's do that. So we are exactly, this is a loop. So we are exactly at the prayer where oh, they're burying yeah. the bodies. Oh, wow. So... Accordingly, 40 boxes, about 300 people. Whoa! And actually, we don't know their name. Exactly. Nobody knows the name. We this is amazing. Know they came from Malatya. This All right. Is what is Malatya? It's a city out of today's Turkey. Okay. Uh, sadly, most of the uh, most of the time you say, yeah, today it's Turkey. Then where 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 is the tomb? Under. No kidding. <laughs> So when they brought the bodies, they gave them the proper burial here, with the prey, with everything. Then, then this is their burial site as well. Not one. it's oh, wow, that makes them that mosaic even more stronger. Even much more valuable. Yes. You know that you, you can actually listen to the chanting of the Armenian in my videos because I love it. Although don't don't say, from time to time they're not allowing me to do that. Look at the amazing hats. Like Ararat. I was at the, at the monastery next to Ararat in Armenia watching Ararat. It's a beautiful place. It is a beautiful place. And you have even in Yerevan, if you go to Kaskad, you can see it. Ah. Then go, go to Armenia. Don't visit only the Armenian quarter. Go to Armenia. And, yeah. Oh, come on, you know. It's a beautiful place and, and, and amazing people. And I'm not talking about the food because. Because it's amazing. <laughs> um, we were going to start talking about the basic of Armenian and how they came to the Holy Land. In 70 BC, the great Armenian Empire started. King Dikran. It, we call the Empire C to It's C. amazing. You do have an Hebrew accent when you say King Dikran. Yeah, because uh, Dikran, it's oh. Armenian. <laughs> so, it sounds like... so you have the Caspian Sea to Mediterranean Sea. One of the beliefs, he reached above Acre. And when he reached above Acre, one of his messengers came with a, with a very important letter that says the Roman Empire is attacking you. So when he got the letter, he had to go back all the way to Armenia. What happened, it was too late. They got conquered by the Roman Empire, and this is one of the effects that we know that there are Armenian warriors in the Temple Legion. Okay, then so here we have some talking about... Oh, yeah, Armenia. yeah, yeah. And, and one of the things that I didn't understand, a lot of inscription, the other side, I think. Yes. But there's no... I don't know what so they... That side is not really finished. Ah, all right. Because this, this for me, it's very important to know exactly. where they found it. So here, it was, everything was found here in Jerusalem. It's, it was here in the parking. It 
was found in the parking. Okay. And one of the mentions about the Armenian is the word Jews, the book. Oh, okay. Yes, that was part, yeah. The, um, uh, the mosaic at the parking place, which I took a video of it before they yes. took it, uh, someone mentioned that it, yeah, it, yeah, it might be here or it's supposed no, to be. They here. took it, uh, they took it. Took it, it's not, it's not going to be. But we're going to see something from that part. Okay, okay, sure okay, 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 okay. So, one of the stories how Armenian accepted Christianity before um, uh, Gregory the Eliminator he had a meeting with two of the Jesus 12 students, uh, Theodor and Michael. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, so he met with them, they gave him their prophet, and he later on went to Armenia. When he went to Armenia, they did not accept him at the beginning, after the king fell ill. Yeah, and released Gregory the illuminator and healed them every he brought the Christianity to the nation. Okay. okay this is fourth century, three hundred and one. Yeah, and, and then I want you to understand it again, although I already mentioned it. The Armenians were the first Christian as a nation. Exactly. Not the Roman Emperor, the Armenian. And one of the questions that people ask me, I'm not sure that I know the answer. We have the Armenian quarter. Exactly. And we have Christian quarter. Exactly. Why we have an Armenian quarter? Is it because we came here? You came here before? Veda, Kalkedon. Yeah, and, uh, monotheistic. Monotheistic. When the Armenian decided to be Orthodox in their way, they departed from the other Christians. So they had their own beliefs, their own cultures, and their true. Own ways. So this is then. Like then when Helen came to here, is it true to say that she kicked out all the Armenians from the Church of the Holy Sepulchre area, and you moved to here, or? About that, um, I don't know about that. Because that's the question mark that I'm not sure that I know the answer. So How? I don't know the answer. All right. Uh, so, the beginning, the Armenian um, letters came at the 5th century, 405. Okay, Mesrop Mashkots, he had the dream when the dream came in Angel with sure. Armenian letters, and he gave it to the nation. I think I've been, six letters. I think I've been in a, a monastery in Armenia. Most probably. Yeah, that must be. Yeah. That, how many letters you have? 36. And you know all of it? Yeah. I know most of it. <laughs> I know most of it. But can you speak Armenian? I speak Armenian. Okay. I forgot the uh, reading and. Okay, that's, that's it. I must say that, that uh, if it's okay by you, I'm delegated that video to Rubina, which is an Armenian lady, a friend of mine, became a friend of mine. She is a part of my subscribers. And we are talking a lot. I don't know what's happened to you lately, but I'm dedicated to her. She is an Armenian woman, but she lives in uh, Australia and dreaming to reach back uh, we as well. We always welcome Armenians all over the world, in yeah. Jerusalem especially. So we're going to talk how Armenians will be able, able to preserve their staying here under the Arab domination. Which so is not easy. It's not at all. So one of the Armenian, one of the things Armenian did is running around with papers, I call it. Yes. So when Prophet Muhammad came here, the Armenian courtyard had a chance so someone can recognize the Armenian lands and properties. So he took papers and started running after the Prophet Muhammad. He got to Prophet Muhammad, he made him sign an agreement that he recognized the Armenian properties. Now, Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad dies. The Khalif started. So what do we have to do? Running around with papers. <laughs> with all the papers. He's running around with papers, with papers we go to Khalif Omar. Ah, to Omar and Ali. Ah, oh, wow, wait, that, that's... That's for Muhammad. This is Omar. And this is Omar and this is Ali. Ali. Wow. Exactly. So here we have exactly the replicas of how they look. Okay, everything is in the Armenian Archbishop archives. Okay, it's it's uh, very very well preserved. They don't open it. Yeah. Rarely. I'm sure. It's very very delicate. It's one thousand. And, and, and we are talking about the seventh and ninth century. Exactly. Yes. So this is how the Armenians were able to keep recognizing their land. Keep, keep signing important people just to recognize. And it's important. It's important. Now, uh, I call this the beginning of the Armenian Golden Age. The First Crusade is one of the reasons we have Armenians today. The quarter you see today is one of the reasons. So, back then, Armenia of today did not exist. It was different lands. We had the Kingdom of Kilikia. The Kingdom of Kilikia is above Lebanon of today, Turkey of today. Um, Let me remind you, Turkey of today and Lebanon of today, the Armenia were there. Exactly. So we know one of the kings of France did not take the land of the sea, did not take the route of sea, he took the land of the land. So he started coming from to Constantinople, moving all around, going to Antioch, coming to Kilikia. What happens when he stops in Kilikia? When you have a big army, you get to a Christian place, so you have men, 
roaming around with women. You have um, markets that you buy and sell. So everything is getting combined with everything. So they picked up wives, Armenian wives from here, and went down all the way to Jerusalem. And this is the start of the crusade. And I must say that you had a lot of good relationship between the crusaders. Oh, oh, when they came to you. Yes, yes, yes. I so, think Melisanda. Yeah. So we have very, very famous ah, queens. We just, all right. So the first queen of Arda, uh, she is the mother of Morphia. Morphia is the mother of Melisand. Uh, all right. The top, one of the things that we talk about, about the Queen Arda, she married Baldwin. Baldwin didn't like her very much. Later on, she became a nun. She gave everything she owns and became a nun, and she was the mother of Morphia. Morphia later on, she did a lot of the Armenians, the famous one is Melisand. Melisand. So at her time, the golden age of the Armenians, 72 churches all over Israel. Yes, lots of churches. So this is one of the proofs you have that Armenians are being here almost 1,000 something in a row. Uh, we're never been kicked out from the Holy Land. True, we stay true, here true. And we keep doing our pilgrimage and continue our culture in the Armenian Congo. So here we can see about the queens. Um, so sadly, the crusaders were in Jerusalem only for a hundred years. What happened later is Salah al Din coming with All right, we yeah, it's a different story. Exactly. It basically, it ends here because Salah al Din comes with Yes, the Salah al Din, we're talking about the Muslim. Uh, exactly. Salah al Din well, El Ayubi. El Ayubi, right? yeah. And he won the crusaders at the Battle of Hittim. Yes. Hittim battle, what happened is Gai de Zignan is French. He took the army of the crusade from Jerusalem and going up north in the midsummer. Yeah. What will happen to you yeah. in midsummer in Israel? Without, yeah, and without, yeah, without water, yeah, it's like uh, they felt like ducks. Exactly. Yeah. And one of the strategic things Salah al Din did is cover up the water wells and even yes. poisoning them. So you don't have water, you're getting well done on the way. So this is one of the reasons he lost the battle. He lost the battle, he became a prisoner, but when Salah al Din came to Jerusalem, he came him back and he got executed for his bad mistakes, okay? True. True. And Salah al-Din was able to conquer Jerusalem in 1187. Salah al-Din has Jerusalem. We still have the kingdom of Acre. It did not fall only True, true, later. true. So, what Armenians did too? Running around with papers. Running around with papers. <laughs> and Salah al-Din, just to preserve the Armenian lands. And it works? It works? Are we here? Yeah, here. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, Later on, I want, if it's okay by you, um, first of all, if you like him, I will leave all the details of his at uh, the description of that video, then you can actually uh, use it as a tour guide, and maybe, maybe you, will, you will be able to enter to every part of the Armenian quarter, who knows? Don't worry, we have protection. <laughs> um, so here, it's not very important, but there is a hole here about the Mongols. How did the Armenians survive the Mongols? Yes. What the, one of the things we know about the Mongols, they destroyed everything. Everything. So when they reached to Armenia, Armenia, they saw churches. They went inside the churches, looked up. They see the icons. The icons had all eyes. So the Mongols thinking, ah, oh, they're not Christians. They're praying to us. So they left the churches. So that's why in Armenia you can see four, fifth, six. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yes, you're right. yes, 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 this yes. Is one you're of right. the reasons. And except that, even later on, we have Armenians fighting with Mongols against the Mongols. Uh, okay? Yes. Um, now, one of the things that happened, the Mongols did lose in Israel. Um, Stronghold of the Mongols. Thanks God. Yes. And they lost. Uh, the king who was in charge was Bibars. He won them. He won over the Mongols. The Mongols did not go to the Holy Land. They continued upwards. So what happened is the kingdom of Armenia is starting to get worse. All oh, right. And if you it's have, not here, it's there. Yeah. Okay. You have raids. You yeah. have sieges. So Armenia itself cannot hold itself. So we're getting less and, and less, less and less. less. Smaller and smaller. This is smaller. the last Armenian kingdom, but it's not the last Armenian kingdom. Yeah. So this is the talk about the agony of the last Armenian kingdom, which had a very, very hard time. Guys, it's interesting. I'm learning a lot. I'm sure that you're learning a lot too. Thank you for doing it. Thank you. Well, this is my job. <laughs> so here we're going to talk about the last Armenian king, King Leon, King Levon V. Um, when uh, Kilikia fell, he, took, he was taken to Cairo in Egypt, and King of France freed him, took him to Spain. From Spain took him to France and gave him his rest of his life, live as much as you can. Okay. And when he passed away, 
he was buried in Saint Denis in France, Tomb of Kings. So you have an Armenian king in the Tomb and of France. In the Tomb of France, kings. Oh, nice. And this oh, wow, I love the Armenian doors. So the, this door is one of the oldest doors of the chapel in the Saint James Church. It was taken especially... We're oh, talking about Saint James, this is Saint, that, that one. Exactly. There's a wonderful door at the narthex of the Nativity Church. Exactly. <laughs> so talented. So with the fall of the last Armenian kingdom, the monarch started to rule the Holy Land. And one of the things you can see until today is the writing that Armenians made them do. In front of the Armenian quarter, you have this one. Okay. And you have inside the Armenian quarter, behind the Sabil in the entrance, this. And this is recognition of the Armenian lands that they're Christians and you're not. We cannot land. do anything to exactly. you. We do have another paper. What we know. Exactly. So, <laughs> See, I study. <laughs> so Armenians do like to run around the paper just to show some proof. Yes. So this is another proof of Armenian lands here. And the walls you see around the Armenian quarter today and the Armenian monastery are made by the great Gregory, father of chains. What he did by the moment of time... I forgot about the father of chains. Yeah, so at the moment of time, Armenians fell into a lot of debts. You are a Christian, you have to pay a lot of taxes. True. So what he did, he put chains on them across here, across here, and start roaming around all over Asia. To, to get some donations. Donation as much as he can. Yeah. So what he did with the donations when he came back, he fixed the, uh, the debt. He fixed the Armenian cathedral. Which is amazing. And with the rest of the money, we have the walls that are built around the monastery today. Uh, we're able to say some kind of a thank you to him because we're able to preserve the language, the culture, and the people. Uh, this room is the Gospels you have here, and each one of them is a different century. The oldest one that survived is 9th century codex. Wow! This is a replica, but the 9th yes. century, is, yes. is it at the exactly. it was library? Here in the grand opening, they brought it. The, the, I missed it. The temperature is a bit yeah. problematic, yeah. so they yeah. changed it. Of course. It. Everything you see here is handmade by someone that took him one and a half years. It's beautiful. And he did only a couple of pages. So beautiful. The value of it is important to the Armenians. Uh, do you remember we talked about the parking? Now, the most yes. the parking didn't fail to the Armenian hand. What fell into the Armenian hand is the Armenian Khachkab. Okay. Well, I was lucky enough to be in that archaeological site, and when they found the Armenian Khachkab, the first thing I said, it's Armenian. How do you know uh, yeah, uh, First of all, you can see the, 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 uh, the cross, the Armenian cross. One, two, yeah, yeah, the Armenian cross. Armenian. I call it the flower. Exactly. And even here, underneath, we have in Armenian the name uh -huh. of the name of that's all that survived. So when they dated this, it's going back to the Crusader time. Whoa. Mm -hmm. 1,000 plus. Then, then, then no one could tell me if the, the church that we found the mosaics for. They say it's a monastery slash church. They didn't really... Yeah, but Greek Orthodox, Armenian... Nobody knows. Nobody they knows. say Lake Byzantine. All right. Yeah, I don't like Lake Byzantine, so I need to know where. I get it. Yeah. So this is another art that one of uh, Armenian famous families did about the ceramics. ceramics. So this is Karakashian family ceramics. I love Karakashian. Uh, is that the one next uh, to the Damascus Gate as well? Exactly. Uh, Kazanova. Yeah, Kazanova, yes. Yeah. Beautiful. So this is their handmade, but we have to remember they came from Turkey, from the city called Kotalea. Uh, the city named Kotalea are very famous in ceramics. Later on, very famous Armenian families came but, here. But when I reached Armenia, I didn't see any ceramic there. Because it's not from Armenia, it's from Turkey. Okay, now I know. You see? So another thing we're speaking did is made the Turks science papers, some papers too. You have Turkish firmans here that shows the Armenian properties. And again, back at the Turkish time, it was the hardest time. Heavy taxes, no ring of bells. Yes. One of the reasons you see until here, today, the Cathedral of St. James, the wooden planks, is because of the Turks. Okay. Uh, it still stayed in their culture to knock on the wood and the bells. Uh, which I must say, I love knocking on the wood. Mm -hmm. Then I'm usually here at five minutes to three wow. to listen to the knocking on the wood wow. ceremony. It's amazing. So here we can see different ceramics coming from that city as a gift to the Armenian Patriarch. We have the Turkish narratives here for candles, a pot that used for water and for flowers even. Uh, later on, now when you walk, you're going to see the Armenian stuff coming. And here I can see the under construction. Exactly. 
this is this this is I you know when I was st standing here I almost cried it's so beautiful so everything here is handmade it's about 300 to 400 years old and came from the church this is all gifts of handmade tiles of ceramics that used in the church when I say the church I'm talking about St. James Church exactly. not the church of the Holy Sepulchre because you do have a lot there as well yes but we do not uh, destroy what we have there this is thing very very old and we're breaking up so we brought it one of the things that is very very old that I'd like to talk about is the Armenian Globus it's about 400 years old. 1695. You know, I looked at the sound, it's nice and it stopped here. 1695, it's, everything is Armenian. It was, sorry, it was a bit abused. It did not know the value of course, yeah. in the beginning, but everything is Armenian. So this is one of the oldest globus that you have in the Armenian. Okay? Beautiful. So here we have more and more things how to escape from tax. How do you accept from tax? How do you do that? You make it a tool, you use on a daily basis. Ah, okay. Yeah, you have to pay money. So this is was used in masses in different places. So they, you don't have to pay the taxes on the copper. Later okay. on, they did it with gold and even with silver, just not to pay taxes. Again, you have to remember the Turkish did decay Christianity. And not only Christianity, but yes, everyone who are not Muslim. part of them, yes. Yeah. So here we have different tools they use on a daily basis. One of the things that saved their life, did you know that copper kills germ germs? No, I didn't know it. So Armenians, by mistake, made buckets from from copper, and later on, it like it saved their life because they took out the water. That's and good. It was though. killing the germs naturally, so they they did not even heat up the water. Uh, that's a, another thing that uh, which is new for me. Beautiful. Uh, this is um, a head of a pile we had here from the Crusader time that we found here in the yes. Christian quarter mm -hmm. in the Armenian in quarter. The Armenian. So. So Looks like marble, isn't it? Very, very Christian. Yes. Very, very yes. Christian. Okay. So here we're going to go to the glass. Finish. But my favorite. Here. All right. That's the marble things that I did in the marble inscription. Mm -hmm. so here yes. You have Armenian khachkars from different areas. All right, khachkar. It's like a memorial um, a stone or whatever. It's not only memorial. It's a, it's a, it's a, signature to show that Armenians were here and, okay. and some kind of a remember that we've been here, we do come here, we're still here. Good, good, good. So we have here different hashkars from different areas. One of the things they found back at the church, Sandai. Sandai. I saw it, I saw it earlier. Very, very old. And th this looks actually new, but it's not. It's about 150 years old. All right. Yeah. Older than me. Yeah. Both of us. <laughs> <laughs> They used to put the books on it and read. It, when you're talking about books, that for me looks like the Quran, not the. So, because but, it came from Damascus and in Turkey, it has the Muslim relatives. But on it. you're talking about Armenian. Yes. Okay. Uh, they used Armenian. Yeah. Um, here we have more daily used tools they made from copper, silver, and gold. I love copper. Um, one of the things they did is to bring as much as they have in the archive just to show and prove what they have. You have chandeliers, you have uh, tobit, and whatever. Incense. Incense. Yeah. You have even things they use on mass pure silver. This one and this one. It looks beautiful. It and is beautiful. And beside that, we're not even in the most interesting area. The most interesting area is this. Yeah, I love that. I love that show. Oh, this is my favorite area. Yeah, I can understand you. Yeah. can even see on my face. <laughs> so, the one on the right is for the Armenian Patriarch. It was made about uh, 80 years ago for the previous Patriarch. It took them 13 years to solve. Uh, two brothers, you have St. James the Captain Head. Yeah, I can see it now. Uh, it has gold, silver in it. it. Everything is handmade. On the, on the left, we have how the monks, Armenian monks, used to go to the uh, to the uh, prayer. Today they are wearing blue, 100 years ago it was red. Um, 1799, someone very famous came to Israel. Ah, uh, Napoleon. So when Napoleon came to Israel, first he was in Gaza, then he went to Jaffa. What happened in Jaffa? He had six soldiers. Yes. The six soldiers were stationed at the Armenian monastery. Yes, of Jerusalem. course, the famous picture, exactly. yeah, he turned it into hospital. Exactly. Yeah, yes, yes. So what happened? Been done that. When the Armenians, priests and nuns, helped him to go back to their full strength, Napoleon gave him 
this as a... Ah, name. then this is a present from Napoleon exactly. himself. It's never been worn even once. The value of it is... Yeah, I can't, I can't uh -huh. understand that. And all around us, you can see tools they use daily basis. Daily basis nice. in the church. Yes. And someone told me that there is a special hat here. Is it true? The right one? Mm -hmm. Very, very expensive. Everything is handmade. You have gems on it. You have rubies and you have even green rubies. So Such a beautiful thing. Everything here has a value of some kind to it. Either a mass or religious or history. Everything here is very, very, very important. And it shows you the Armenian historical chronology. chronology. In, in Israel itself. Wow, that, that was an amazing part. I'm so afraid from the upper part. It's actually not easy for me, yes. and I'm sure that it's not easy for you as well. Yes. Uh, I do have something private in there too. And, uh, that, and that was a question that I wanted to ask you. I know that a lot of, uh, you're not so, are you practicing or secular uh, Armenian? Uh, no, practicing. Practicing. But, uh, but you are, you, you, you was born here. Yes. And, and yeah, fourth generation, it means that someone from your family My grand -grandma. Yeah, ran yes. away or ran escaped away. from the Holocaust, yes. from the genocide. Yes, from the Armenian genocide that happened all over Turkey back then. Uh, again, there are some specific places that it happened, but then places it did not happen. We're going to talk about everything. All right. Hello again. The entire second floor is dedicated to remember of the Armenian Genocide and the horrific, horrific thing we had to go through about less than 100, 150 years ago. Um, here we can see a lot of different pictures, but one of the things I like to show is the Armenian ceramics that someone sacrificed one and a half years in his life to do this. It has all the Armenian important narratives in it. 301, accepted Christianity. 405, Mesrop Mashtots. Vartan Mamigonian. Vartan, yes, I've been so, in there. Vartan Mamigonian yeah. fought against the Persians. True. And he lost the battle. Still. The Roman, the Persian Empire never were able to recover. Yes. And that's the fall. Although he lost exactly. in the way he won. So Mount Ararat. Ararat. All right. Holy and I saw, Trinity. yeah, I saw Mount Ararat, uh, but from the Armenian side. Yeah. So here you have again Christians, Heres, Psime, Echmiadzin, Mashtots. All the Armenian important places of today. Even in mother. Exactly. So the mother here has a tree, kind of a tree role. Okay? This one is defending Armenia. This yeah. one is the mother of prosperity and the mother that defends. This is the family she's defending against the snake. You can see the sword. This is the snake. Zorvar Antranig is the guy that started the Fedain. Fedain are in charge of, well, they're not in charge. They rebelled against the Turkish, the Ottomans that okay. came in to kill Armenians. And their place was Atavan, one of the biggest resistance that hold until the Russian Empire came. So, even here we can see the horrific Armenian genocide and what yeah. happened in the Armenian genocide. This is places that got massacred. You can see how big the circle is, is how big the horrific the massacre. thing exactly. Yeah. And, and your family came from? We're going to see it on ah, the bigger map. Okay. So, there's one thing, we exist, we shall remain, and we shall increase. Yeah, and this, uh, this is a very important exactly. sentence. And I need to make this tattoo yeah. on my body. You know what? Yeah, I know where you can do that. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> I'm promoting him too, but I'm afraid of needles. <laughs> I've never been That's how in I, it. I did half of my arm is full of tattoos. Oh, really? I'm afraid of needles. I'm so afraid of needles. So, so that's why I made the tattoo. <laughs> So something so less happened. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, no, this is 1894. Uh, the first killing of Christians started all over Turkey. Uh, Abdul Hamid II. He was in charge of deportation, killing, murdering um, women and children that were Christians, even before Armenians. So one of the things they did in 1894 was uh, killing Christians all over Turkey. They killed almost 200,000 people. Um, again, and that's before the well-known genocide. There is a reason we mark 1915, and we're going to talk about it, but it even happened before 1909. First murders, first banishments start happening all over Turkey. Uh, back at this time, 1909, we have uh, 90 days of uh, Musadag, Kesar. Uh, one of the things that happened there, the French general that 
was Armenian, he did a t detour with his name. He went to Kesab, saved Armenian, and went back to France. Today, you have one of the biggest communities in France. Which are, uh, and the most famous singer. He died. He died, he died when I was in Armenia. Exactly. He did his wish. Yes, his yes, wish. yes. Um, the reason we say 1915 is the day that everything started is the Armenian elites were executed slash banished. Most of them got executed. We have different people from different places. This is the place I hear for uh, Father Komidas. Uh, Father Komidas is in charge of the Armenian folk music you hear today. I heard about it. When the Kurds got to him, they burned all of his copies, 60,000 copies in front of his eyes. He went mental. He did not talk. It, they didn't kill him, but he... he yes. Because he wasn't talking. Yes. That's why they didn't kill him. He yeah. died later on in France, but because of him, he was able to, to preserve a couple of hundreds of songs, and most of the Armenian songs you hear here that are based on him. And I want, yeah, I want you to look at the faces of, uh, let's say, innocent people. Um, my family. Zakarian. Zak wait, Zakarian, I know the Zakarian in Jaffa. Your family? Uh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. My family is very, very big. My family has, do have lands in Christ Church of today which belong to Zakarian family. Okay. Zakarian family has a book in the um, holy, sorry, the holy tomb of Jesus. Yeah. The holy sepulchre. They have a book there of uh, when you were there, so they have one of the rights there 500 years ago. Then you can you can follow Zakarian. Um, if you don't know Zakarian, it's okay, but it's a f very famous family, at least for me. Uh, so we have, we're going to talk here about the Kurds and Turkish, the SO units, special organization units that did most of the charge of the deportation, mass killing, uh, convoys of Armenians. One of the things the Turkish told to the Kurdish is show me that you killed Armenians. So they start decapitating heads, ears, and noses just to get their money back. Um, they start the death marches, which is, was in the desert. It's not like in the Holocaust, it, in the winter. There you yeah. can even hide a bit of water. Yeah. So in the desert, one day, two days. No, you cannot. I mean, two days, I mean, uh, two, two hours. It's already exactly. difficult so to be in the desert. You can see the uh, documentation of the Armenians, 306 convoys, million forty people. Very, very sad. Um, again, this, this is one of the first movements you can see. It's not random, like they claim it is. This is well-planned, well-organized mission to destroy and eradicate Christians slash Armenians all over Turkey. Um, here, we have a table of victims dying in natural causes. Yeah. Okay? 400,000 people. Just like that. Just like that. This is Turkey back then. You can see different places that Armenians were deported, places that eradicated completely, places that got massacred, and concentration camps that later on be killed in. Um, personally, my family came from Adana, from Lapash, which is Marash area, and Antab. They were escaped. My great grandma came here when she was three years old. She actually is a, 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 a kind of genocide survivor? Yes. All right. Uh, she was a genocide survivor. And, I, and I'm so happy that she came when she was three years old because she doesn't remember a lot. We all are. We yeah. all are. And here another uh, slaughterhouse they had. You can see Armenian bodies trying to burn <sighs> them. Uh, again, trying to hide all of the proofs they did. The result of the Armenian genocide is 816 orphanages coming to Israel. They actually lived here in that building. The boys. The boys. The girls were at the Orthodox Greek monastery by Ah, cross, yeah. So, when Which I usually do here, it's coming here. Press home. Go to Z. One, two, three, four, five. Orphanage came from the Zakarian family. Five. Okay. So, their parents were gone early on. And they had to continue their life. Here we have a picture of the men and girls that came here. Different orphanages that accepted Armenians later on. They came either to Israel, either back to Lebanon, Syria, if I remember everywhere, correctly. Everywhere. Uh, today you have communities in Syria because of the uh, actions that happened. A lot of them left to Armenia. Uh, the main step of the Armenian Patriarch in Jerusalem is to rehabilitate 
rehabilitate the Armenian orphanage to forget and continue yes. what they did. So they gave them different different tools. So you have the monastery here. That's a cross monastery that I know. That the girls were in. Okay. And the boys were at the monastery. Where well, at, at that building. Exactly. Which is the thing it used to be a seminar. It was a. It was built in 1850. Yeah. It was the first for a place for the pilgrimage, then a seminar, okay. then and an orphanage, orphanage, a seminar, a museum, and a museum. Okay, now you're yeah, true. And I was at least at the <laughs> two parts of the museums. Exactly. <laughs> so here you can see how the Armenian Patriarch gave. Uh, that's at the cross, that church. Uh, yes, in yeah. different, different places. In yeah. St. James Monastery, helping the orphanages, giving them food, places to sleep, education. This is, this is here. This is here. This is here. Yeah, yeah. That one. All right. You can see how it looked 100 years ago. Yeah. So, again, you had the Armenian properties. And one of the things, the Armenian community here, they had a, a band. And that band went to Ethiopia and played for the P Crown Prince Rastafari. Uh -oh. Today, you have the Armenian Ethiopian community until this day in Ethiopia. And this is the reason why. That's a nice story. Here, you can see more of the Armenian properties all over Jerusalem. This is... I think you know where it is. Yes. Right? You, I, I know that there is a lot of property, of uh, Armenian yes. property in, uh, in, in, in Jerusalem, Jaffa, Jaffa Street, Jaffa, Jaffa, Jaffa Road, yes. This is the main hall of the Armenian monastery. It looked, look how many people. Today, rarely. Wait. How many Armenians are? Uh, we say 3,000, there's less. The, uh, less than 1,000, and all over the world? More than 10 million. Yeah, just like the Jews, more exactly. and less, yeah. yeah. The parking hundred years ago. Yeah, was that's a just outside the uh, outside the, uh, yeah. uh, the monastery. Ah, uh, uh, that's that's the museum. Exactly. I came from here and through somewhere exactly. no, there, exactly. and that's the parking place. You can see the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Exactly. So here Beautiful. we have the Saint James Cathedral, even the place of the patriarch, different patriarchs we have. Uh, one of the things, April twenty-four, when we the day we remember the Armenian genocide. 1980, it was the first time they did it in Israel. The parade. And I, I was part of it 10 years ago. Almost in almost April 15, I think. Yeah. So here we have more people that did as much as they had with the Armenians. And it shows a picture of the... The Armenian in Armenia and all over the world, all not only world. Israel. Yeah. So, but I have to go back to Israel. How do you know if someone is powerful in Israel? All the important people come to meet the locals, which were who? Armenians. We're here for such a long time. We know the shortcuts, we know yeah. the governments, we know everything. Teddy Kolek, yeah, the, uh, Beres, mayor. Yasser Arafat, yeah, even Arafat. Pope. Yeah. You have so many important people, King Faisal and King of Wow! Rome. That's uh, when that place were part of Jordan. Exactly. Herbert Samuel. Ah, mm, yeah. Very, very important people. Even the Armenian Catholics came here. The Armenian Catholicus, has, he is the Armenian Pope that is in Yerevan. Uh, so here you have more pictures that show you the importance of Armenian and the role of together. We're here, we can live together, we're going to stay here, everybody's going to be here. You, you, you have to live together. Sadly, um, in Israel, everything is going up and down. And down. Tell me about it. So here we have more pictures of Teddy Kolek, even the chef. That's a mayor or an um, ex ex He's mayor. He's the legendary mayor. Yeah, the yeah, legendary mayor of, of, of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Hebron. What can I tell you? Beautiful heritage you have. Thank you very much. We're not done yet. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, but I'm afraid to end. Ah, no. To the print? Yes, of course. No, the movie will be there. Yeah, yeah, I, can, I cannot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's such a very important video about what's happened to the Armenians uh, genocide. I watch it for 20 minutes. I cannot watch it anymore. Uh, as you said, YouTube. Yeah, ravished Armenia is the name of the uh, movie. All right, it's about rubbish. Yeah, All right. Rub okay. So my favorite. Yeah, know? this so is like yeah, I was standing here for 10 minutes. <laughs> this look at the Armenian Church, Mount Mount Zion. And it's in the wall of the city. In Jerusalem. Well, let's start with that. Who were the first people who printed here in Jerusalem? The Armenians. Yeah, I wanted them to be sure. Exactly, and this was from the 1900s, 1822. Okay, it was used by this machine. We have books that were printed from this machine here. We can see today. We can see even the date 1867, what? 1833. 
different. This is a gospel that they used while praying. This is a mismo. Um, this is a poem. Yeah, poems they yeah. use on daily. You can see the different tools they use on daily basis. Even the ink you have here. Yeah, the letters. How our meanings were able to keep preserving their history and keep printing about their history and get, even helping other communities in the whole city just to make posters and everything. And this is another role that only locals know. Uh, again, the appreciation is getting less and less. And eventually, let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, and I must say that it's not easy for the Armenian, and I'm saying it as an Israeli guy, uh, to live here as a minority. Uh, there are some fundamentalist Jews that makes their life a little bit difficult. Uh, that's why every year I'm in the Pentecost room, uh, together with the Armenians, just to take care that everything will be okay. Then, oh, I didn't even think about it. So this is where the priest and the monks used to wash their hands and feet. It goes all the way down. Ah, oh, lovely. Yes. All right, tell me a little bit more about you that people will know so, more about you as an Armenian-Israeli, um, whatever he wants to say. Okay, you don't need... So my name is Eric, Eric Artudjian. I'm a fourth-generation survivor. I'm living in the old city for now. I'm a licensed tour guide. Now, the history of myself is I went to fully Israeli schools. I went to Dula Shoni, which is an Arab-Israeli school, tried to work, Arabs in Israel, it happens. They do sometimes go together, but again, racism goes up and up yes. in both sides. Yeah. You cannot take one side. Both of the sides have the same blame of the hatred. Um, after that, I went to fully Israeli school. I went to Zalman Aran, Gymnasia. Uh, Well-known schools yeah, in Jerusalem. Even Selisberg. And after that, I served in the military for a short time. Uh, in the military, I got the full package of how Israel is doing. <laughs> not easy. Uh, not easy at all. Um, it wasn't easy for me too. <laughs> yeah, so you do know that your place is kind of not here. Uh, everybody's telling you that you don't belong here, but eventually we've been here long enough. To You've be here. been here before my family been here, before the Palestinian families were here. Uh, you were here uh, from the 4th century, I mean, you are the Armenians. Then, uh, let's face it, uh, this is your country, not less than my country. And we'll do whatever we can to preserve it. Yes, it and, and you're doing a great job. This museum is amazing, and you are more than that. Thank you very much. Then, um, if you want us to know more about him, I will leave at the description of beneath the video all the details about you, then you can actually ask him questions and it can be... Oh, huh? Come on. Uh, you will be, uh, I want them to be your tour guide, not on here, I'm, I'm sure that thank you know you more than much. that. Then thank you for being with us. I it's think done. that was one of my most important videos ever. Thank then uh, thank you very much. See you in my next video. Thank